Squire of Hell By Troy Maverick Chapter 6 When she had said ride back, I didn't think she actually meant hitching a ride on her back. I was hesitant at first, but desperate, Faye taking a seat right behind me. This felt dirty, and it wasn't because I was riding a girl I'd just met. My skin reeked of demon blood and demon breath, but neither of the girls complained. The filth seemed to bother me more than my company. Still, I was dying to get out of these clothes, and praying we didn't run into any more goddamn demons. Nayla continued to clack happily down the horizon, taking a hidden route through the forest. I held onto her hips while I made a mental note of my surroundings, but I couldn't do much with what I'd seen so far. There were no landmarks, and the terrain was mostly identical all the way through. Repetitive tall towering trees, unkempt foliage, strange cooing and grunting from animals, and the restless fog that continued to block what I assumed was Rello Hell's moon hovering over our heads. We shouldn't be too far now, Nayla said. Maybe another 15 minutes or so. I think we've settled down from all of that excitement, I replied. So, you may continue explaining this world to us. She nodded. It's nothing like Earth, that's for sure. I've never been outside Rello Hell, but I've heard stories of what Earth's like through Lucifer's eyes. You mean Lucifer has access to Earth? Faye asked behind me. No. Something about a pact with the God of Angels limits him to go there himself. He sorta had like this crystal ball type deal where he can monitor everything that happens up there. You had mentioned your king had fallen, I said bluntly. Who killed him? We don't know for sure, but rumor has it that his children were plotting against him. More specifically greed and pride. Lucifer has seven children, gods of the deadly seven sins. From oldest to youngest, pride, greed, lust, envy, gluttony, wrath, and sloth. Pride and greed had been eyeing their father's throne for decades, and some say that they finally found a way to take him out. I am not the slightest bit remorseful about his death. Faye said, before she wrapped her arms around my waist, leaning herself closer to me tenderly. Butcher here has been slaying criminals like him for years. Such a sweetie pie he is. My big bad vigilante. All right, hold off on that thought, I said, itching to address this issue. Faye was laying it thick back there, and I just had to ask, what the hell happened to Faye? She drank some of the water, and ever since, she's been acting very off character. More affectionate. Oh, that's our border control? Nayla clarified. But no one ever really falls for the trap. The stream is charmed, empowering lustful feelings for whomever drinks it. Basically, it takes whatever the user's romantic desires are and magnifies it, making the feeling insatiable, to a point where they have to express themselves to the ones they love. We use it to thwart enemy efforts to infiltrate our land. The effects were off after a few hours, with the longest it's ever lasted being a whole 24 hours. Is that right? Hmm, maybe I should savor it while it lasts. We have a bunch of that stuff in our dungeon. I am not charmed, Faye said. It is clear to see that no woman would ever need to be enchanted to adore such a chiseled, courageous, and ingenious man like Butcher. Not to mention, well-endowed. Nayla winked as she looked down between my legs at my bulge, and I grunted. But, why are you calling him Butcher? I thought his name was Knives. It's my field name back home, I clarified. Graves the Butcher. I kill our very own demons, the ones hiding in human skin. What a coincidence. Seeing that you have a kill system. For every life you take in Rello Hell, you get stronger, more powerful. Says the crest of Lady Lust's legendary blood squire. You were chosen. Chosen for what? Chosen to protect your queen and her people. The crest is appointed to a soldier our goddess sees fit. Stories have been told about her blood squire, tales of where one day, he will present himself, summoned by our Lady Lust to execute our foes one by one. The goddess of lust is being held captive under the god of greed's hands. It isn't a coincidence that you dropped into Rello Hell since her recent capture. I think she must have summoned you. How strange, this symbol on my hand appeared when I killed the fucker who had murdered my sister Lenore. I had once thought that I was chosen, however, not for something like this. I knew there were greater powers in play, but to be a blood squire for one of the deadliest sins. And lust for that matter. What were the credentials for that? Should I feel honored, or unsure of myself? I'd always wanted to do good by people, and give back to my home in ways no one ever could. Day in and day out, I'd made it my mission to restore a sliver of peace in Ebonmere. And now, I had been summoned to fight for a woman, the same woman who could have very well given me these powers. This war for the throne between the regions has been going on ever since Lucifer fell. His throne sits empty, and everyone wants a piece of it. 
Every kin to the demon lord has a nation to his name, which splits Relo Hell into seven regions for the seven deadly sins. When Lucifer was around, there was a pact to keep the sins tamed by allowing humans to control the seven deadly sins on their own, meaning, no demonic influences. So for example, if humans were collectively pulling toward greed, then so be it. Greed's demons will naturally become more powerful. The ability to persuade humans has long been extinguished, thus, the pillars of sin cannot be moved by invading land here in Relo Hell. Nayla, are you saying that these gods, kin of Lucifer, have the ability to move these pillars of sin now that Lucifer is gone? It's against Lucifer's will, but without him around to enforce it, these crazy gods are free to do as they wish. And they didn't choose diplomacy. They chose war. Where are these pillars of sin? Within each region. For example, the pillar of greed is in a temple in greed's country. The pillar has segments, or spaces, you can move. One movement equals a certain number of influential points in the systematic realm of sins. To gain points, you need to conquer land in Relo Hell. For instance, if Greed's demons conquered Lust's country, which they are already on the verge of doing, they gain a certain number of points for every sector of land they breach. If they move enough segments in their pillar, they will forcefully influence Greed upon humans, making their god stronger and thus supporting the vicious cycle of dominance and superiority. When the Sin God gets too strong, that Sin will become the new ruler of Relo Hell. Either way, that can't be good for Relo or Earth, I mumbled to myself. But this could explain what's been happening in Ebonmir. The constant struggle for power between the deadly seven. So far, my nation, Lithenia, is the weakest, and has been for years. Greed capturing his sister was just icing on the cake. We've been having so much trouble with greed and pride that our resources are being exhausted. We lost men, and our women and children were forced into hiding. Some civilians refuse to bow and submit, but eventually, we will all sink to their will if we don't find an answer soon. She sulked, then Nayla turned over her shoulder to look at me promisingly. That's where you come in. But we'd like to go home. Faye insisted. While I'm sure Butcher would love to help you and your trouble people, we have a bit of trouble of our own back in our town. But taking down these demons is directly protecting our home, I answered Faye. Besides, we are stuck here, so we might as well do what we can in Relo Hell. Butcher, think this through for a minute. You are supposedly the goddess of lust's blood squire. You shed blood for her, and you become stronger. Your main mission here is to make her more powerful. It's a mutual agreement where you will ultimately lose. And how is that? Because when you take down the other six deadly sins, her so-called siblings, you are in fact helping her build the ultimate nation, thus leading humans to become more, well, lustful. But lust makes the world go round. Nayla cheerfully proclaimed with her hands in the air. It populates the world, and keeps the human race strong. Better lust than any of the other sins. Think about it. Faye narrowed her eyes at Nayla. Lust is a dangerous sin regardless. It leads to rape, adultery, and other venial sin. I will do it, I said, before Faye could say more. Under one condition. You want to make a contract? Nayla asked. Yeah. If I slay these other demons, then I demand Lady Lust revert to Lucifer's pact. That way, there's a regulated system of sin, where no sin could freely dominate the other. What? My people need a break, I said, straightening my stern eyes on Nayla. Enough is enough. If I help your people, I need her word that she will help mine. Faye nudged my arm, trying to catch my attention. She didn't say a word but I knew what she wanted. A tie-in to this agreement. I looked back to her and read the exact request off her face, then turned back around to Nayla. All right. And we want your alchemist to work on a way of opening a portal back, so that we can return when all is done. Nayla scrunched her face at us. I don't know if Lady Lust will adhere to those demands. They are pretty steep. Considering what I am doing for her, she ought to. Yes, but you have to understand that is your purpose here as her blood squire. She expects you to help her people. You are her chosen blood squire. I also have the damn right to reject that title. It's my choice at the end of the day. If what you said about her luring me here is true, then she is the desperate party in the contract who has a lot to lose here. So she better do right by me, by doing right by my people. 